Okay. Um, feel free to speak up anytime you have a question. It's a little hard for me to um, check the chat sometimes because there's there's so many students, but I'll do my best to. But you know, don't be afraid to just uh, speak up and and say something. I prefer that. You know, um, as one of my teachers said, if I'm going too fast, just uh, just interrupt me, and if I'm going too slow, just uh, just ask me to go faster or whatever. Um, I'll. I'll I err on going slower just because it's a bigger class size. But um, yeah, does anyone have a question? Just just speak up. Just press space bar to unmute. Okay. Very good. So to start off, I guess I will. Um, some of you may have studied with me in the past. I use this platform called OneNote to kind of assimilate information. Uh, and some of the stuff is. Uh, is yet that it's some of the stuff that's on this document you've yet to learn. You're not gonna, you're not going to learn it in week one. You're gonna learn it like week five or week six. Some of the doc, some of the information on this document might not even be up yet. So, um, so just kind of. Uh, but with that being said, I pared it down quite significantly, so that I think everything on here is stuff that will be on the final eventually. So if you ever want to get a head start, you could, you can kind of probe ahead. Um, but I haven't included any 1C stuff here, for instance, because I, I don't want to confuse you with too much information. Um, the class Zoom link is here. Um, it's under course stuff. The syllabus is here. Uh, the homeworks are here. Uh, there's a link to a Google Drive um, where you can click this, and basically you're going to uh, you're going to see all the different weeks of homework. Uh, you'll see basically a PDF of the first homework, and you'll um, you'll also I'll also include a Sibelius file, just in case you want to use the notation software that I use. There are a couple of dictation exercises um, as well on for, for the homework. Incidentally, homework one will be extra credit, <clears throat> and uh, it's it's more to get me a sense for for how you guys are doing and how you're reacting to this material and where you guys are at and if some of it's too hard or too easy. Um, there are some protocols about homework. Um, when you submit on Canvas, there's going to be a Canvas uh, page where you could submit your homework. But um, I want you to submit it as a PDF. In fact, um, there won't be any option except to submit it as a PDF. And I want it as one PDF um, and no pictures. Because if it's one PDF, the TAs can kind of grade it more um, easily. It, instead of having to flip through several different documents, it renders uh, the best possible way when it's one file in this format. So if you've never um, made a PDF before, um, there are some tips here on generating PDFs. You could print out the homework if you are that kind of person, and you could um, scan it using, a, using this app called Genius Scan, which I highly recommend, it's free. Uh, it's available for iPhone and Android. Alternatively, if you are working on a on an iPad or a tablet, uh, you could you could work directly off the um, off that and just kind of save that and and submit it on Canvas. Um, there's also this cool app to combine PDFs that I really like. Um, you could do that as well if you're having trouble. If you have like two PDFs and you're trying to co consolidate them, this is a good app. Um, so that's a little bit about the homework. Um, the first homework I think I'm going to make do on Wednesday at midnight. So you'll have just a little over a week to, to do it. We'll have today, Thursday and Tuesday, as well as sections um, to kind of talk about it. Um, <clears throat> syllabus. OK. So some of you have made inquiries about the syllabus, uh, including TAs. Um, I do want to address those inquiries uh, because of the fact that this is an online class format. This is slightly different from how it was taught last year. Um, and some of that, some TA slash students have caught that uh, on my syllabus, just little errors that I forgot to correct in terms of the adaptation. But um, most of it is, is uh, current and, and up to date, and there will be an updated version that will be, uh, that will appear here when it's, once it's uh, fully corrected. So for one, um, my name is uh, Nakul Tiruviluamala, and um, 
I guess, as you know, we have lectures uh, 9.30 to 10.50 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and there is a recurring Zoom link that you can just keep accessing. Uh, I, I asked if some of the TAs could be available today, but it was kind of last minute because of the fact that I just discovered who they were yesterday. Um, so some of them are here. Um, I guess those who are here, maybe they can introduce themselves. Uh, I guess I'll go first. I am a computer music uh, PhD student. I am basically in my fifth year. This might be my last year. I have a background in, in a bunch of different things. I kind of jumped between degrees. I, I have a background in classical piano, jazz piano, um, composition, and now I'm studying computer music. I also really like, um, you know, I, I, I do a lot of production. So like I have a bunch of instruments. I, I like singing. I do a lot of multi-tracking. So I really like electronic music, but I, I enjoy all kinds of genres of music. And um, from, from one standpoint, I actually was really bad at theory when I was growing up. It didn't click to me. So I guess uh, it helps to kind of go over this stuff. In some ways, I think you might, it, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good exercise to teach stuff you're not good at because you actually get better at it by teaching it. And also in some ways I have a weird perspective because I was so bad at it. I'm, I'm quite patient at it, I think I am. So uh, don't ever feel like not being proficient to theory will doom you in any way. It's just, just be patient and I, I totally uh, empathize with the struggle. Um, with that being said, I will pass it off to whoever else is here. Um, I think I saw Alana here. Yep, I'm here. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Alana. Um, <laughs> my name is Ilana. I'm a... Uh... Violin is here at UCSD. I'm in the DMA program um, in performance in my third year. Um, I, yeah, I really, um, I have a background in like classical, traditional classical violin playing, but slowly over the years, I got more and more into doing experimental um, music and playing, making weird sounds on my instrument that maybe are less beautiful than what I was started out learning. And so that's kind of what I'm focusing on here at um, UCSD. I'm currently in Toronto, because um, that's where I'm from. And yeah, I'm looking forward. I know some of you I've worked with before. I looked at the names on my section. Um, not everyone, but um, yeah, really excited to be working with you guys this quarter. Wonderful. Really happy to have you on board, Alana. That's awesome. Oh, I see Miguel. I'm just kind of poking through the faces. There's lots of faces here. I'm happy to see that. Um, Miguel, why don't you go? Sure, thanks, Akul. So it's great to be here again. Uh, I'm Miguel, Miguel Angel Sasueta. Miguel, you can call me Miguel. Um, I'm a singer in the master's program here at UCSD or there at UCSD. Uh, I'm currently in Tijuana because I'm, that's where I'm from. Um, uh, I, have, I was trained as a opera singer, classical opera singer, and now I'm uh, making my way into contemporary music, mostly contemporary opera and contemporary art songs and experimental things. And yeah. I also love like interdisciplinary stuff like dancing and moving while singing and stuff like that. Uh, I have taught this class uh, before with Nicole like for a year, so we, we know each other. Uh, I know some of you as well. Uh, I really enjoy um, uh, give, working with this class. Uh, I hope that you will enjoy it with me. Also, I will send you links shortly because I know we have a section at 11, but I have been working my way through to see who is in section how to do this, but uh, you'll have that uh, in a few minutes. So it's great to see you and uh, please also re reach out uh, as many times as you wish. Uh, I, I enjoy working with you and, and it's a pleasure for me to to solve your doubts. So thank you. Yeah, really happy to have you on board, Miguel. Um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fire. This is gonna be awesome. We have some great people here. Um, I see Jacques. Yes, hi. Uh, my name is uh, Jacques Safra. I'm also from Mexico, and I'm in Mexico City right now. Uh, I'm in my third year at UCSD. I'm doing the uh, composition PhD program. And 
Well, I have background in composition. I've been studying composition for, I don't know, 12 years or something. So I, I play guitar. I used to study jazz before studying classical music. And uh, I also used to have a rock band when I was younger. But now I'm, yeah, doing uh, also some weird stuff. Uh, so uh, if you are in my class, I will be showing you some of the things um, I do and my colleagues do. Uh, I always want to, I always like to show you what people at the department are doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, you might be inspired by that. Cool, nice to meet you. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, we have some really amazing, uh, Everyone here is so amazing. And so it's going to be really cool to interface with all the music from the department and from, from, from the TAs. I'm so happy. I'm so excited to work with them. So it's going to be really fun. And um, yeah, thank you, Jacques. Yeah, they're getting, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw in the chat. Yeah, my, cats and dog, my cat and dog is getting pretty, getting along pretty well right now. I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. Um, let's see. Um, who else is, this might be all the TAs here at the moment. Um, so Hi, you... I'm here. Oh, Matt, is that Matthew? I don't think we've met. Yeah, lovely to meet you. Um, yeah, great to meet you uh, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm Matthew. I'm uh, in the first year of uh, my DMA here. I'm a bass player. Um, like pretty much everybody else said, I have a background in you know, classical double bass performance, and, but I wanted it to be weirder. So I came to UCSD. Um, yeah, um, I also have a background in music theory. I was a theory minor in my undergrad and always had a particular interest for theory and, and analysis. So um, yeah, it's lovely to see some familiar faces from last quarter here um, and some new faces. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to working with everybody and uh, uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Fantastic. Nice to meet you, Matt. And uh, yeah, that's that's really cool that you had a you're doing bass and your theory minor. And uh, yeah, excited to excited to check out your work. Uh, Demetrios, I think I see you as well here now too. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Ooh, that's a big class. Nice. Um, nice to meet you all. I will meet you all actually. Uh, oh, so I'm Dimitris. Uh, I'm a pianist in UCSD. I'm a doctoral uh, candidate. Um, after this uh, class for many quarters, um, I'm so happy to be with Nakul again and with everybody. As I said, I play the piano. I'm from Greece. I am in Greece currently, um, so I'm, I'm very happy that I will be teaching this class uh, this quarter, and uh, I'm here to help you and answer all your questions and everything, whatever you need, and I hope we have a great quarter. Hello. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Demetrius. Yeah, it was great working with him last year. And uh, what time is it in Greece right now, Demetrius? It's almost 8 p.m. Okay, wow. It's totally, totally on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. Man, I, I miss all you guys. It's going to be like, I, you know, this is the closest I get to like, a, I, I miss going to concerts and seeing you guys perform and all this, all this stuff. So it's cool to just see everyone. And uh, yeah. it's making me crave. Uh, yeah, I, I want to keep keep up to date with everyone here. So this is it's great to to see you all, and um, we have we have really amazing um, mentors that are that are here. So I'm I'm grateful. I'm going to pick their brain, and you know we'll all interface with each other, and um, you know there's going to be some crosstalk. And so I appreciate, um, <clears throat> yeah, very lucky for sure. So. Um, yeah, well, those are the TAs. I'm glad I got to introduce everyone. I don't, I don't think I missed any. We have five, and um, great. Well, let's give everyone, let's give them a round of applause. You know. All right. 
Okay. Well, I don't know. Okay. So I'm on this Zoom feature. I don't know if I pinned everyone right now. Did I, does everyone see six faces right now? Did I do that or? No. Oh, okay. All right. So let me, okay. Okay. So I will, let me share my screen again. I think that'll change it back to the way it was. All right. Awesome. Okay. So <clears throat> some of this information will be updated. I, I still have to sift through the Zoom links, and I guess every all the TAs have access to Canvas at this point, um, and it should theoretically work correctly. So they should be able to be in contact with with their appropriate sections, and um, these are these are what they are. Um, I will put up a Zoom link if it's appropriate for for each of these on the syllabus, but um, in case they want to keep it private for whatever reason, I could also they could send it to you. And the office hours are kind of filing in, so I'll, I'll put that on here as well, but um, just as an extra means of how to uh, <clears throat> reach your TAs and find out about office hours. Okay, I'm going to kind of uh, skip through this. Um, yeah, um, at some point I'm seeing about getting the access to this uh, website called Theta Music, which is an ear training app, and there's an extra credit opportunity where you can practice ear training. This is one of the things that's a little bit uh, sad about the online format. It's difficult to do engage some. It's it, it's difficult to do things like singing and playing piano, um, if not impossible to play piano. Um, although I, I was talking to one of the TAs, and I there seems to be some hopeful possibility that we might even be able to include something. I was I was thinking about not having piano at all, but maybe we could have something where we have. Um, you doing something on your 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 iPhone or your Android, and you you can do something like that. There are there are possibilities, but there will be singing um, in this class. And uh, so anyway, there are no required materials. All the required materials. This is self-contained, so all the information that you'll need for this class will be contained here. Um, I actually didn't write all of this. This was uh, adapted from a 1A syllabus. Uh, Celeste Oram wrote some of this. It's beautiful writing. Um, I would encourage you to read it. It, it talks more about the mission of, of music and it, it has some interesting information, metronomes, online piano keyboards. Yes, we'll become better listeners, we'll become better singers, we'll, you'll learn a wide range of terminology and vocabulary. Um, you'll become fluent readers and writers of musical notation. You'll develop fluency with the Solfege system and you'll acquire, hopefully, acquire elementary keyboard skills. Okay, um, great breakdown. There will be nine weekly homework assignments. Uh, it just the math, the way that it works out, each one of those homework assignments will be worth 7.7 .7 repeating uh, percent of your grade. I, I wasn't sure how far to go with this. I was thinking like, you know, this could make or break your grade, that extra decimal place. So I could have gone a couple more pages on this. So, I mean, I guess if you're on the cusp and if you have a seven point, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, if, if you're on the cusp of getting an A minus or a B plus, that extra decimal place may, may save you. But, um, so yes, there will be actually nine graded homework assignments and there's gonna be one extra credit homework assignment. So the midterm and the final will be worth the same as the regular homework assignments. They'll just be worth more points. So, um, well actually, yeah, I think, I think the points will just, I, I guess I should, They'll, they'll be approximately worth this much on average, I think. Um, or they'll each be worth around, each, each be worth this. I'm, I'm, I'm debating between both paradigms, but basically it, all the collective weight of all your homework and midterm and the final will be worth 70% of your grade. The three performance quizzes will be assessed at 30% of your grade. There's 10% each. Um, you know, lecture attendance is, um, I, I said this in the email, but if you can come to lecture, do come to lecture. Uh, it, it's just it's just so much better that way because you can ask questions and you can get on the spot feedback and uh, you can tailor the curriculum that way. And honestly, like it's so helpful when, when, when students come in asking questions, I, I can better facilitate uh, the students that way. Um, so please do come to lecture. If you can't come to lecture or section, send an email to your TA and CC me just so that there is communication about that because we do actually check up on that. We do have attendance reports for Zoom. You may not know this, but we actually 
can go to zoom.com and literally know when everyone came to lecture and when everyone left according to their email address. So it's like, we have that information and if you, you're not showing up and you're not giving us a reason and we, we look at that and we also check that you haven't been doing a bunch of homework, we'll, we'll get concerned. And so we, we, want, we want you to be um, engaged with the whole process. So please, you know, show up, turn on your videos. It's okay, you can eat breakfast, you know. My mom brought me some breakfast, it's okay. I, I think it's good, you know, helps, helps, the, uh, helps the brain function a little better. It's, it's all good. You're not, you're not being judged for how you appear on camera. Um, there used to be a no laptops policy, now it's a yes laptops policy because we're in a pandemic, you need a laptop obviously, so yes to laptops. Don't cheat. Um, <clears throat> okay, this is important. There's a shh, it happens clause. And this is, um, <clears throat> this is significant because if you, you have to turn in your homework on time. Because logistically, if, if I don't say that, it becomes very difficult for the TAs to grade your homework. With that being said, if you tell your TA in advance that you need an extension on your homework, you don't have to tell me, you just have to tell it, well, I guess just CC me and tell your TA because they're the ones that are grading you. If you tell them in advance, you get a five day extension on, on one of your homeworks, uh, but you have to tell us in advance. And um, so basically turning your homework on time, that's, that's huge. And you have to, you have to do that because it just, the TAs are very busy, you know, they're all doctoral students. So, you know, they've got a lot of stuff to do already. So I, I, I don't want to put any additional burden on them. So make sure you do that. Um, so extensions will not be granted. So make sure you turn your homework in on time. And if you, if you have extent, if you have like, extenuating circumstances, like if you have um, an ongoing medical condition or if there's some significant emergency, you know, we're, we're nice people. So we'll, we'll make accommodations, but I guess the key to life is communication. So just be very um, communicative about any sort of situation that you're facing and we'll be, we'll, we'll do our best to be um, kind in light of the, the circumstances. Um, there are OSD accommodations. Um, please let me know about any accommodations that are needed by week one. Um, there are also campus um, counseling and psychological services. I know that this time, from experience, this time is a very difficult time for many students, including myself, to be honest, because we're all students. We're just grad students. And so if, the, if you're going through anything, like, um, please, um, I can't underscore this enough, please, reach out to this, um, talk to someone and, and reach out to the service, these campus services. Um, you know, mental health is most important thing. You know, all this, you know, you can't, you can't do anything without, um, without help. So we, that, that's really important. And, you know, let us know if you're, if you're, if you're going through anything, we want you to be um, doing well in life and in the course. I'm not sure how this Triton food pantry works because it's, uh, I don't know if it's open right now, but uh, if you are in need of certain provisions, I know the Triton Food Pantry um, has been able to provide these in the past. I'm not sure about right now, but anyway. Any questions about any of this, email me or the TAs. Um, I noticed, one of the students noticed that some of these dates are incorrect. I forgot to adapt the dates, um, but the week by week breakdown is approximately correct um, for, for what we're talking about. And I'll, I'll make sure to update the specific dates, but um, okay. That is the syllabus. I, I know that was really scintillating. Um, I apologize um, if that was boring in any way. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, let's, uh, let's get on with it. Uh, let's, I think a good uh, a course of action would just be to open up the first homework assignment. Oh, by the way, um, TAs, you're always welcome to come to class, but do not feel any pressure to, you know, you, you, you can leave now if you'd like. Um, I'm very grateful for you for having come. There's no pressure for you to come to class because you already know all the material. And, um, but if you'd ever do like to come, you're more than welcome anytime. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, <clears throat> so what I did was I went to the OneNote. By the way, let me tell you one thing about the OneNote. <clears throat> the OneNote is 
you could, you could view it in your browser by clicking the link, but you could also download the app. Um, there's apps for Android, I, iPhone. There's also, as you can see, a desktop app. There's even a desktop app for Linux, for Mac, for any kind of platform you can imagine. The advantage of getting the application instead of viewing it in the browser is because it saves, all the content is saved to your computer. And like right now it's not because it's the first time I've opened this notebook. But the idea is you don't have to refresh anything. You can just like literally click it and it, all the stuff just appears immediately, which is pretty awesome. So if you're finding it, like if you just want to click quickly, like go places, it, it caches everything on your computer, which is like a huge advantage to me. So I don't have to like wait for my page to refresh. I can just jump between sections. Incidentally, there's this handy search function. So if there's a particular topic that you want to look up, you can, um, you can find it that way. Um, so I'd recommend getting the app if you can. Um, I just love this app. I've got so many notebooks and it's just, it's great because you can create nested uh, things. Some of this stuff is not gonna be talked about, I'm um, looking at, but I'm keeping it up here anyway. Um, but anyway, with that being said, let's check out the homework section. So if I go to course stuff and I go to homework, like I said at the very beginning of class, I'm gonna click the Google Drive link and I'm going to go to homework one, which is extra credit. There will be multiple extra credit opportunities for class. So um, anyway, I'm gonna open it up. And what I see here is, so, okay, I'll be frank with you. Since I didn't teach 1A this year, I'm not sure how obvious this will be to answer for you. So let me just ask a couple of questions to kind of prime you before we actually start the exercise, because in order to do this exercise, you actually have to know the key signature, right? So in order to understand the key signature, you know, it's, it's worth kind of going, doing a little refresher on this. I know it's, um, it's been three weeks since, since the final. So I guess I'll just point you to the direction of where you can find it on the OneNote, at least in the way I've packaged it. So if you go to keys and scales under theory, you're gonna find this little handy dandy um, circle. It's the circle of fifths. It's the circle of life, everyone. No, I'm just kidding. It's a circle of fifths, but it's significant enough to me that it's basically the circle of my life. What's significant about the circle of fifths is that it outlines all the different keys for you in terms of how many sharps and flats exist in each of these keys. So if we're glancing back at this particular exercise, the problem we're having is there are four flats here and we don't know what key corresponds to four flats, right? But the circle of fifths tells you that information. And what's great about it is basically, if you go counterclockwise on the circle of fifths, you can start cataloging how many flats um, <clears throat> exist for each of the different keys as you go counterclockwise. You can basically figure out how many flats exist for all of the flat keys if you go counterclockwise. If you go clockwise, you can figure out all of the sharps that exist for all of the sharp keys. Um, sorry, as you will discover, I actually have more than one cat and more than one dog. I've got three cats and two dogs, so it's becoming a little bit of a zoo in my room right now. But anyway, other story for another time. What I have here, basically an important and thing to know is why is it called, like how is, how is the circle organized? Um, well, it's a circle of fifths, right? It's not just the circle of fifths, it's the circle of perfect fifths, right? So to back up a little bit, I think it's really important to be able to traverse musical notes by different intervals. So let me actually, um, unfortunately, let me restart my Sibelius software to kind of demonstrate this concept. Give me one moment. The reason I have to restart it is because it interacts with another software and I have to do something to fix that. So bear with me for one moment. Incidentally, this is the software that I create the notation exercises on. So you can get an academic license for eight dollars a month if you want to just type the note answers directly. Okay.
Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm sharing my computer audio. Okay. You can probably hear this now, right? You can hear that? That's great. It's a little glitchy. I don't know why. Um, whoops, sorry. So one thing I want you to be able to do well is to be able to climb up different notes by different intervals. So for instance, if I play this, if I, let me just back up, right? These, these notes are in order. Can you see this? Am I still sharing my screen? Okay, good. Um, notice how this is a line, line note, and the next note is a space note, and the next note is a line note, <clears throat> excuse me, and the next note is a space note, line note, space note, line note, space note, right? Right? So if this note is C, the next note in the alphabet is D, right? The next note in the alphabet is E. Next note in the alphabet is someone, 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 uh, talk in for the next note. What is this F. note? F. Just like you grade in this class. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. The next note in, uh, the next note is G. G. A. B. C. Okay. So this is something. Okay. Now let's go backwards. C. B. A. A. G. G. Ah. F. E. E. D. D. C. Very good. You guys are anticipating the zoom delay. That was pretty painless. The more, more. I mean, that was that was pretty good. I'm used to being in a lecture hall where everyone is saying that together, and it's you know, it's it's beautiful. But anyway, um, so this game is something that I've learned from a basic method book called Alphabet Soup. So what we're doing is we're basically rearranging the letters of the alphabet in seconds. So for instance, we're doing something like this. If you start on C, the letters going forward on the alphabet up till the next C, um, going in steps, yield you what we just um, got right here, right? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, right? Now, if we go down, we have C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. So this thing right here is alphabet soup in seconds. I really like this. I, I like soup in general, but I like alphabet soup, right? So it's really important to be able to just know how the associations work. Like, in other words, it's good to know basically how to read steps, right? <clears throat> if you go to notation and you, you talk about reading steps, it's helpful to recognize when notes are in order for one, right? Like all these notes are sequentially in order. Like there's, these are all steps, right? If you can recognize this and kind of spot this right away, it saves you some time, right? Because if you're looking at this, you don't have to actually think about each note like, you're not like, oh, what is this note? Um, well, I know that this is a C. What is this note? You, like, there are certain, certain mnemonics, right? You might have learned these mnemonics to learn specific notes, right? How many of you guys learned these mnemonics to learn the treble clef notes and the bass clef notes? Does anyone, has anyone learned these mnemonics? Yes? Let me check the chat. Yes, OK. So people have learned these mnemonics. However, these mnemonics only go so far, right? You might be like, okay, for the, you know, for the treble clef space notes, it's face, right? For the treble clef line notes, it's every good boy does fine, right? For the bass clef space notes, it's all cars eat gas or all cows eat grass, right? For the bass clef line notes, it's good burritos don't fall apart, right? Okay, this is great, right? You could literally like think about all these notes in that way. You could be like, oh, this is this is a bass clef space note, right? 
So what I could do is I could say this is, what, what is this? All cows eat grass, right? What is the mnemonic appropriate for this particular note right here? What mnemonic is appropriate? It's a bass clef line note, right? Good burritos don't fall apart. Good burritos don't fall apart. So you could be like, good burritos don't. Okay, don't, D for don't, right? Okay, what is the mnemonic appropriate for this bass clef space note? All cows eat grass. All cows eat grass. You could be like, all cows eat, E for eat, right? Then you could look at this line note and be like, okay, what is the mnemonic necessary for this note? Good burritos don't fall apart. Right? And you could be like, ah, good burritos don't fall. Oh, fall, right? This is an inefficient way to read this passage because you're not taking into account that all these notes are stepwise. They're all in order. This is why I was talking about this alphabet soup thing. If you can identify just by looking at the intervals, basically the distance between these notes, that they're following a specific pattern, like these are all seconds, right? You might say, wait a second, what's a second? Well, a second, right, it's the closest possible distance on the staff, right? A line note to the adjacent space note. Space note to the adjacent line note, right? Line note to the adjacent space note, right? So, so it's more efficient, I would argue, to read this particular passage by just taking note of what the first note is, which is A, right? Everyone's great in the class so far, right? And then after that, cataloging the distances between every, you know, just basically climbing up the scale, right? So we're A, what is this note? What's above A? B. B. C. D. E. F. F. G. G. A. Uh huh. A. G. F. E. Okay, very good. Hey, I like the alternating thing. So if someone, I don't mind if multiple people are interrupting each other. I, it, it makes me happy to hear different voices, but I like, I like the, um, I like whenever, if you say it, say it. It doesn't matter if multiple people say it. E. D. C. B. B. A. A. Okay, very good. EA Sports. Okay, no. Um, very good. So what we have is basically a particular scale. It's, you can see how it's much more efficient to read in this way, right? This is something that you can practice without a staff. The, the true alphabet soup game, you could literally be on the subway. Um, well, there's not a sub, well, you might be near a subway because we're not, some of you are not in San Diego right now. You could literally just start on a letter and be like, oh, I'm gonna start on A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, right? You don't need a staff to practice this skill. You don't need a staff. You just need, if you can practice, if you can learn the orientation of these letters, you could translate them to the staff after the fact. This is something you could practice when you're walking down the street. You know, like if you ever get pulled over and, and, uh, and, uh, and you're asked to recite the, the, le the alphabet forwards and backwards, you'll be in great shape because you'll be able to recite the musical alphabet forwards and backwards. Um, but anyway, um, there's a lot of beauty in being able to do this because you're gonna be in a situation where you can actually traverse the staff with ease. You, you'll be able to account for ascending notes and descending notes, okay? This is all building up to something. And I know some of you, this is review, obviously. Uh, this is all building up to this idea of, of how you can do this with different intervals, right? So instead of being in seconds, right? What if I did this in thirds? You know what, let me remember the shortcut to hide the staff. It's not that. I created all kinds of shortcuts. Um, give me one second. Appearance. Ah, uh, I did it wrong. It's okay, whatever. Okay. Let's do the same thing, but in thirds. Whoops. Hey, these are all on thirds, right? You can see how this is a line note. You're skipping a space, you're going to a line note. You're skipping a space, you're going to a line note. 
skipping a space, you're going, you could have done the whole thing starting on a space and it would have also been thirds, right? Starting on a space, skip the line, space, line, space, right? These are thirds, right? This is alphabet soups in, uh, uh, sorry, this is gonna be a frequent thing where you see me struggle with dragging things and et cetera. Alphabet soup in thirds, okay? So let's try this. Instead of starting on D, let's start on C. Okay, so what is this note right here? C. D. G. B. B. E. D. E. F. A. A. C. 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 A. F. F. D. B. E. E. G. E. E. C. C. Fantastic, right? So this is alphabet soup in thirds. This is also very useful, right? Instead of thinking, oh, okay, every good boy does fine. 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 B. Every good boy does. Every good boy does fine. Every good, boy, right? It's not efficient to do it that way. It's more efficient to recognize that there are a lot of thirds here and just be able to traverse these thirds quickly. Now I'll tell you, this is something that really helped me. I, when I got into my classical piano degree back in the day, I got rejected. No, I didn't get rejected. I got conditionally accepted on the basis that I would improve at sight reading because my sight reading was so poor. So from firsthand experience, I know that this helps, this will help you learn how to read quicker. If you can identify these different intervals, it helped me get faster at navigating through the page. Now, if you look at some of the, um, I'm not by far the best sight reader in the world, but I, you know, I, I could talk to a few of them, some, some really, um, and, and, and um, it seems like they not only, they, they, they seem to just really know where all the notes are immediately. And they also know the distances between the notes and they can just do it really in a way that blows my mind. But I think it's a good skill to cultivate is just by practicing these intervallic relationships. And again, you don't, you can see how you could literally practice this without a piano. You could, you could do this in your mind and you could, you could learn the letters and then you could, um, you could also visualize a piano or you can just learn the letters, right? It's hard enough to just say C E G B D A C C E G B D F A C C A F D B G E C, right? It's a hard thing to do, but it pays dividends um, if you're able to do that successfully, right? So let's go on, let's skip ahead, okay? Let's actually go on to fifths. I'm gonna start low. Uh, doesn't like me. I'm gonna do it slightly different. I'm gonna actually do the circle of perfect fifths here to kind of continue off the conversation we were having earlier. Ah, uh, sorry, give me a second. Ah, uh, sorry, this is not pretty. I apologize. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little bit of this. I'm not gonna do the entire thing. So if we're going up the circle of fifths, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process that's very similar to alphabet soup, right? Like the process for me for figuring out key signatures is very similar to figuring out this game of alphabet soup. Instead of doing things in seconds and thirds, we'll do things in fifths, right? And we'll, we'll just basically, and the advantage of doing this is twofold. Not only will you be quicker at reading passages that are in fifths, if they ever do occur, but you'll also be able to learn something about keys and key signatures, right? So for instance, let's just all say the circle of fifths. This is something I used to do in one series. Um, well, I should say, yeah, I, I, it's a true statement. I used to do this. Um, I used to have people hold up their hands. So if you can, hold up your hands. And um, yeah, yeah, that's great. I'm seeing some hands, you know, spirit bomb energy, guys. Let's let's do this. You know, give me all your kai. Okay. Anyway, um, hold up, 
let's hold up your uh, hold up your hands, and then basically what I want you what, what I want you to do is I want you to say the circle of fifths going forwards. And every time you say every single time you say a note going forwards, I want you to hold up an additional finger. So for instance, we're C. You got a fist, right? For C, the next one will be G. I'm holding up one finger. Say D. A. E. Okay, I'm gonna pretend everyone is saying that. Okay, so let's start over. Let's let's create a little rhythm. Okay. C two three four. G D two three four. D D two D. A A E E B B E F sharp. And let's go one more. G flat. Actually, C sharp, technically. See, what I like to do is I like going from C to shining C. So for instance, I like going, ooh, I have to change my font. Give me one second to change this back. So for instance, I like going from C. The next one is G, right? And then the next one is D. Then the next one is A. The next one is E. This is just classic alphabet soup, right? Then B, then F sharp, and then C sharp. And that's Basically, each one of these accumulates sharps, right? So C has no sharps, G has one sharp, D has two sharps, A major has three sharps, E major has four sharps, B major has five sharps, F sharp major has six sharps, and C sharp major has seven sharps, okay? Okay, let's do that. Let's do that all over again. Let's go backwards. We're going to go from C to shining C, okay? So we're going to start with C. And we're going to go backwards and we're going to land. Where do you think we're going to end? Or you think we're going to end at C sharp or you think we're going to end at C flat? We're going to end at C flat. Okay. So let's do it again. Hold up your hand. Let's start with C. We'll, we'll create a rhythm. C, two, three, four, F, two, B flat. Okay. Okay. This time we're going to do it for real. I want to hear those zoom echoes, those oddly timed delays from people saying it at the same time, but Zoom rendering it incorrectly. Let's do it again. Everyone, two, three, go. C, C. two, three, B. four. F, F. two, three, F. four. B flat, B flat. two, B flat. E flat. flat, E flat, A flat, A flat, D flat, D flat, G flat, G flat, C flat, C flat. Hey, very good. Okay, so let's 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 look let's look at this this way. C F B flat E flat A flat D flat G flat C flat. Let's actually create a little table. I'm going to create insert um, table, and I'll make it seven by two. Okay, so it's going to be C G D A E B F sharp. C sharp. These are the order of sharps. Let's go backwards. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat. Now here's the thing. If you ignore the sharps and the flats, I'm going to make this a little bigger. I'm sorry, it's really small. If you ignore the sharps and the fats, flats, this is just alphabet soup, right? You're just going up fifths. Right, you're skipping. Like for instance, if I if I went here, and I did. Uh, oh, whoops! Sorry, it's playing that. If I did this, right? Alphabet soup will tell me. Right, I'm skipping. These four notes, right? So, for instance, give me one second. I'm gonna make this fancier. I'm skipping these four notes, right? So basically, I'm basically going, well, I'm doing one, skipping two, three, skipping four, and here's my fifth, right? So like, if you're struggling to figure out these intervals, like if you're like, oh, how do I do alphabet soup on fifths? You just have to keep cataloging the in-between notes, right? And you just skip them. So you could be like C, skip D, skip E, skip F, G, you know, you know, you can just keep doing that, right? Um, I would tell you to do this 
if we were in lecture, I'd probably actually have you do this, but the whispers, will, it'll just sound really chaotic with all of the delayed whispers. Um, so C, skip D, skip E, skip F, G, skip A, skip B, skip C, D, right? Don't feel like, oh man, I don't know where C, I don't know what a fifth above C is. I can't, I just don't know. Just count, right? You, it's, it's literally, you're just, you're like, don't worry about doing it fast. Just take your time and practice this. I will tell you this, if you can do alphabet soup with all the intervals, seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths, et cetera, I'll make a document with all of them. You'll be a ninja in some, you'll, you'll have like earned your stripes in a certain regard because you'll be able to traverse all the intervals with ease. It's a difficult thing to do. It's something you don't need a piano to do. You can literally, it's a great conversation starter. You know, if you're just hanging out with friends and you have nothing to talk about, just be like, hey, C, D, E, F, G, you know? It's, it's a great thing to be able to do in general. Um, impress your friends. Um, so this is, I can't, I can't recommend this enough. It helped me a great deal because I used to be of the school where I'd be like, I don't know, I don't know this note. And then I'd have to like think about every good boy does fine, face, all this stuff. It wasn't until I realized that I could learn the distances between notes to make my life easier. Um, as a reader, it helped me. It's not to say that you shouldn't know the notes cold, but context is everything. Learning the context of these notes is really important, okay? Okay, let's um, check out the homework assignment. Okay. Oh boy. So we learned a bunch, we learned about the key signature, right? Let's think about this. Let's break this down. Not that this is the answer or anything. I mean, I'm not saying that we're going to figure out the answers here. Not that you want to take notes on this or, or anything. Okay. So let's start this particular exercise. Um, what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with four flats, okay? So we got to go backwards on the circle of fifths four times, right? So let's start with C. C, two, three, four. F, two, three. B flat, E flat, A flat. A flat. Okay, you got it. Hey, we timed it. A flat major is the key signature, right? This key signature is an A flat major. How many, would you, would you say most of you knew that? Hopefully you knew that. Um, I should create a poll. Um, I should think of a good name for this poll. I'm gonna, I was gonna call it, how many of you knew that? But that's not a very good question. How many of you knew that key signature? Okay. Okay, uh, sorry, this is the first time I'm doing this. Single choice. Uh, That's the title. Uh, oh, you have to oh, put that great. question in the question box. Oh, okay. Did you know that key signature addition? Okay. Okay. All right. So let's let's ask this question. Um, save. Okay. Are you guys seeing this on your Zoom? Poll? No. I think you have to delete the other two questions. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Delete. All right. Save. Uh, it deleted the question that had the question in it. Oh my gosh! It's meta. Um, okay, maybe this. We didn't give any. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. All right. Question number one. Um, if you go back to the Zoom thing, there should be an option like three dots, and it hit. You can hit poll, and then it'll did say like submit poll, and then oh, like launch poll, maybe maybe now. Yeah. Is, okay. Oh yeah, now it yeah, works. Now we see it. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, we got it. Okay. Wow, I'm getting a lot of yeses. Oh no. Okay. Some no's. Ooh. Not sure. No, repeat the questions, please. Okay, that's good. That's very clear. Um. 
Okay. Okay, this is my next question. Um, Oh my gosh. Promise this will be a little more streamlined next time. Now, now that I know how easy this is, this is great. Um, save. Okay. Got a question. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna save this all. Delete this question, save. Okay, I guess I have to wait till I launch Paul too. Okay, so I'm getting mostly yeses. There are 25% of you who don't know key signatures. Um, okay, I will say this. There's a really cool website. I actually have my own website, but I, I think that this website is better in many ways. And um, I'm big enough to admit that. No, I mean, this, there's, there's some cool stuff on this website. There's some stuff that my website doesn't have, but this website is pretty cool. Um, so if I go to uh, tutorial, let's see, to, uh, exercises, and you go to key signatures, you could basically, I'll put this on the OneNote as well. You could practice the different key, you can also shop for rugs. Um, you could practice the different key signatures on this particular website. You could practice identifying them and you could practice constructing them. And what the difference between construction versus identification is, is you'll see in the homework, right? In the actual homework, you basically have certain spots of the homework where you have to draw the key signature. And then in certain, ident in certain exercises, you'll just have to identify the key signature. For instance, right here, in order to get the first question right, you actually have to identify the key signature, right? So anyway, I'm getting a sense that one fourth of you don't know this. So it's worth me just explaining it the way I am and the TAs can explain it as well. Um, good to know. Let me end this poll. And, okay, stop sharing. Uh, Can I ask you guys a question? How do I launch this poll? Poll two. I guess I exit out and try this one more time. Polling. I think you go back to Zoom again. Go back yeah, to Zoom. Yeah, it's the same process as the first one. Okay, but it's it's giving me the option to relaunch poll one. Do you see that? No, it doesn't show your Zoom when you when you're on the page. Oh, I see. I didn't share that part of the window. Um, second, sorry. This is very, this is a very useful feature. So I'm glad we're figuring it out. I apologize for the, excuse me. Okay. I think you're going to see my zoom windows now, right? I think so. Okay, cool. I think you, you can see, I, I just set, set it so you can see it, I think. So you can see it now. Right. So I'm only giving you, I have poll two here and I'm only seeing the option of relaunch poll one. Maybe delete poll one. Oh, here we go. Poll edit. two. I, I got it oh. now. Sorry. It's dropped down. Okay. Let me just so that it's not obnoxious. Let me go back and un show my zoom window. Okay. Okay. I'm going to launch the second poll. Take your times. Take, sorry, take your time. Uh, okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. Hmm. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry, I'm I'm just uh, thinking out loud here. Not really saying anything enlightening. I know. Okay, most of you don't know chromatic solfege. Most of you know movable solfege. I would say probably the same amount of people. I, I would say like, does anyone? Okay, I, I would say that people know movable solfege. Okay, good. All right. But I'll still go over it. Solfege hand signs, you don't know. That's not going to be a deal breaker. That's okay. Okay. All right. So let me let me jump ahead here just because this homework assignment will require some knowledge of Solfetch. I love Solfetch. I actually love Solfetch so much I created a, on my own website, I have like a little Solfetch app, Solfetch Explorer. And Solfetch Explorer, if you type in Solfetch, what's cool about this particular applet is it actually show, geometrically shows you where the Solfetch is. It'll show you, depend, it'll show you contextually where the Solfetch is. So like for instance, Dota Me, goes up, right? Fa goes up above that, me goes down, right? You could also specify octave and you could do something like this, right? You can do all kinds of interesting stuff. You can even play it, it sounds really dumb, right? So you could play your soul fetch, you know, get off your Xboxes, get off your Playstations and play your soul fetch, okay? And uh, I think this is a great way to practice actually. You can, you can type in some soul fetch, for instance, it's a major scale. And you can see, ah, it's a nice little ascending shape and a de descending shape. I'll try to improve this app so the sound quality is better. All right. This is alphabet soup, right? Remember we we're talking about alphabet soup, how it was, this is alphabet soup in seconds, right? These are exactly in order. These solfege syllables are exactly in order. Do, the next syllable is re, the next syllable is mi, the next syllable is fa, right? These are solfege syllables in seconds, right? If I want to do solfege syllables in thirds, right now it's it's getting even broader, right? There's some space between do, you're skipping re, you're going to mi. You skip fa, you're going to so. You skip la, you're going to ti. You skip do, you're going to re. You skip mi, you're going to fa, okay? Let's do it in fifths. It doesn't look quite right because of the fact that it's wrapped around a little bit, but you can see that the gap's even bigger, right? You're skipping re, mi, fa, you're going to so, you're skipping la, ti, do, you're going to re. Why solfege? Why, what's the big deal, right? We just learned all these alphabetic names. Why solfege? I'll tell you why, sol, why I love solfege so much. Solfege is a really, I think I have a more concise way of saying this on my OneNote and but you know, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna riff here. It's really great because every single syllable of solfege ends in a vowel and it's very easy to say. So if you imagine certain things like F, F, right? You have to say F and then you have this like fricative at the end where it's like F, it's hard to say, right? It's also hard to say things like if you're going, um, E, F, G, A, B. Some of these things are just not as easy to say. It's not as easy for me to say C, D, E, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, as it is to say Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Like the vowels themselves are constructed in a way where it's easy to say. Um, it's easy to produce. Also, there's something about solfege that is more abstract than the letters, especially with movable solfege, whereas the letters tell you the letters just tell you basically the exact notes that you're playing. So for instance, if I, if I go back to this particular um, Sibelius file, these letters are literally telling you to play these notes on the piano or on the flute or whatever instrument you wanna play. These are exactly the notes that you're playing. But if I did the same thing in solfege, give me one second. If I did the same thing in solfege, right? If I did this, let's say I did do this two ways. Let's say I do this in terms of letters, right? So this will be G, A, B, 
C, D, E, F sharp, G, right? Okay. What I could do in addition to this is I could write, gosh, give me one second. I could also alternatively represent this in terms of two types of solfege. I'm going to start with movable solfege. If we know that we're actually in the key of G major, what's useful about actually writing this in solfege, in movable solfege, is that you can call the first note of the scale Do, the second note of the scale Re, the third note of the scale Mi, fourth note of the scale Fa. So, La, Ti, Do, right? What you're doing here is you're describing these notes as scale degrees. So in this particular, in the context of movable solfege, you're describing the notes as scale degrees. So it's more abstract because you're actually describing the particular pitches as being like, oh, I'm in the first note of the scale. I'm in the second note of the scale. I'm in the third note of the scale. I'm in the fourth note of the scale. So there's extra information here. There's different information here. You're basically thinking about it as a theoretical representation. You're like, oh, okay, this is the first note. This is the third note of the scale, the fourth note of the scale, et cetera, right? Let me elaborate on this a little bit more. Give me one second. So much better. OK. Um, I don't have to go in order. Just to, just to be clear, if I do something like this, right? if I do something like this, this right here, let's just think about the solfege. If this is Do, what is this? I'm skipping Re. Me. Me, exactly. It's all about me, guys. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm skipping Re, and I'm going to Me. And then what am I doing here? I'm going from Me down to Re. Re. What is this? Me. Okay. So. Back down to far. La. So. Fa. So. What's up? T. Uh. And la. La. Do. Okay. So in terms of scale degrees, this is one, this is three, this is two, this is four, this is three, this is five, this is four, this is six, right? This is five, this is seven, right? These are just alternate ways. You might say, well, why can't I just call this seven instead of T? That's, totally, that's okay. Jazz players do that all the time. They're like, oh man, I put a flat seven on that chord. It sounded so great. Or I put a flat three on that chord. I put a four on that chord. Put 11 on that chord. You could say that, but just think about the, the letter, the number seven. It has two syllables, right? Versus T. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, ti, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I can't do it, right? It's just, it's just faster. Like you can say things faster by using solfege. Um, and it's just like kind of, it's meant to be sung. So as a result of being able to say it more effortlessly, you're intended to sing it. And so by singing it, you're also able to reinforce it, right? There's this principle in neuroscience, neurons that fire together, wire together. So I think solfege is a great example of that. It's meant to codify theory and practice at the same time. It's like you're practicing your theory it's like, it's like you're doing multiple things at once. You're, you're killing many birds with one stone. Not that I condone that. But you're doing that, and you're basically able to 
get a lot of bang for your buck by using solfege. Because the idea is you wouldn't just think about the solfege, you would practice your solfege. You'd say, do, mi, re, fa, mi, so, fa, la, so. This is great when you're trying to practice your ear, cultivate your ear training, right? Because you're thinking about this stuff and you're, you don't have to know what key you're in. You don't have to be like, you don't have to have perfect pitch. You don't have to be like, oh, that's G, B, A, C, B, D. That's more abstract. I mean, no, no, that's, that's less abstract because you're literally saying, oh, this note is G, this note is B, this note is A. You can just think about the relationships of, the, of these notes in a key and that's better um, in, in many ways because then you're, you can learn this, you can lear you're learning the theoretical relationships. You're learning that this is the first note of the scale going to the third note of the scale, going to the second note of the scale. It doesn't matter what key we're in, you could apply this to different keys. So um, there are a ton of advantages to using solfege. And this is movable solfege. And the solfege that we're basically going to mostly do is movable solfege. In fact, all solfege can be considered movable solfege in some ways. Um, but just for those who are con confused about fixed solfege, I think I might adapt some of my homework assignments to change this a little bit. Fixed solfege is basically movable solfege in the key of C major. That's like one way of thinking about it. So for instance, if I got rid of this key signature and I made it, I know I'm going a little fast here, I apologize. I'll definitely repeat this stuff, okay? Let's say I'm in this situation and there's no key signature. Right, I have these notes, right? If I'm in the key of C major, what would this note be? Do. Do, right? Then I have, right? Basically, I'm just going to reference everything against Do, right? Similarly, if I don't have no, if I don't have any key signature, right? If I don't have any key signature, I could reference everything against Do, and this is basically what they call fixed. Solfege, fixed solfege, because do is always C. La, I didn't, these, yeah. La is always, basically, if I, if I were to do this, right? It's always going to be this, depend, no matter what key you're in, this is fixed solfege. So in fact, I think I might modify my homework assignment there's a section, I know one of the TAs brought this to my attention last year, and where some, some students are confused between movable and fixed. There's a section at the end of the homework assignment where actually I don't have you do solfege, which is great. Okay, so this is great. So essentially all the homework assignments that you'll have to do will have you do movable solfege, where, where you'll be given the first syllable and you'll be given the key basically. You don't even need to know. We, we calculated that this is the key of A flat major, and therefore A flat will be Do. But I've also given you Do, just for fun, right? So if this is Do, what is this? Re. Re. Mi. Do. Hey, you're even singing it. I like it. Fantastic. Um, so exactly. I tried to insert some songs here, so you might uh, you might recognize some some songs as you're as you're looking through this. There are some chromatic syllables; they're not that tough. What I love about chromatic solfege is instead of saying fa sharp, so la sharp, right? All these all these extra sharps or flats, you don't have to say that. You have one syllable. So this is the chromatic scale. It's every single syllable in order. It's like, you can say do, ti, re, ri, mi, fa, fi, so, si, la, li, ti, do, ti, te, la, le, so, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. It's so convenient. You don't have to say do, do, sharp, re, re, sharp, mi, fa, fi, fa, sharp, so, so, sharp, la, la, sharp. It's like, it was a game changer for me. I've always loved, I've always been a weird, have a weird obsession with solfege. And um, when I discovered chromatic solfege, I'm like, this is a game changer. This is incredible. 
because it it character it captures this idea of soul fetch where you can literally have it's the most singable thing possible, and you don't have to say extra additional syllables. You can you can convey all the information with one syllable. So if you're confused about what syllables to use, fear not. First of all, this homework first homework assignment's extra credit, so any point is is a point. But if you're trying to get a leg up, it's really easy to learn chromatic soul fetch if you've learned diatonic soul fetch. The idea is. You, if you want to sharp a note, you just change the vowel to an E vowel. Do, D, Re, Re, Mi, Fa, Fi, So, Si, La, Li, Ti, Do, D, exactly like that, right? If you want to flat a note, you basically change the vowel to an A vowel. So, Do, Ti, Te, La, Le, So, Se, Fa, Mi, Me, Re, Ra, Do, okay? So for instance, if we're looking at this exercise, this first one doesn't have any chromatics, so it's going to be pretty straightforward. For, for those of you who know solfege, this will be straightforward. For those of you who don't know solfege, practice alphabet soup with solfege. In fact, I'll make a document with all the alphabet soups. That'll be my homework, and I'll, I'll publish it so you can look at it, and hopefully it'll codify the relationships a little better. Um, but for, for instance, this exercise right here, there is no, there are some chromatics. So what would this normally be? This would be me, re, right? This is re, right? But because this is re sharp, re becomes re. Okay? So me become me goes, instead of going to re, it goes to re. Me, re, me, t, re, do, la. Do, mi, la, t. Oh, oh, not that those are the answers or anything. I'm just, I'm just riffing. All right. Then over here, you have me. What is this? This would normally be me, fa, so. What does so become? You're sharpening so. C. C. C, senor. Okay. So then you have C, and then you have, uh, you keep going, right? It's not that difficult to adapt the diatonic notes to become chromatic, right? Triads, most of you know this. So this, oh, it's key signatures. 75% of you know this. These answers just literally exist on the one note. Like you can just find these answers on the one note, or you could, you could use my technique of traversing the circle of fifths. It's such a helpful thing to be able to, to know the different keys well. We haven't talked about minor keys, but we can talk about that next time. Most of you probably know it already. Triads, major and minor. You know that. Um, uh, ignore this typo. It's, it looks kind of like acrylic or something. It's, it's, not, it's not Russian. Some scales. Those are there. Some notes and intervals. OK? Those are important. Dictation. OK, so I included a few files where you listen back. Sorry, it starts in the middle of the file. And then you can listen back, and you can notate these, these exercises. And anyway, I think we're over time, but I'll stick around. I do have office hours for the next hour. I, I, I set time for the, for the next hour, but do come at the beginning of office hours. Don't come in the middle because I'll, if I don't see anyone here, I'll leave. Um, so let me know at the beginning if you'd like to, to meet with me. I also can meet by appointment if, it, if, it's, uh, if there's another time that you'd, you'd like to meet. With that being said, I'm very excited to be working with all of you. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. This, I, it's been a while since I've taught theory and I, I love theory. Um, so it's, uh, it'll be a lot of fun for me and I hopefully, hopefully you'll all enjoy it as well. And, um, yeah, I don't know who's here still, but if you've stuck around, thank you. Um, and, uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'll stick around for questions. If anyone has any questions. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Thank you. What kind of breed is your dog? Oh, she's a um, Australian Shepherd and German Shepherd, mostly German. We got her at the um, German Shepherd Rescue of Orange County. Um, yeah, I do have a question. Um, so on the syllabus, it said um, it said final projects, but what is what is that? What does that look oh, like? Oh yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess we're not going to be doing that this time. Well, okay. Let me. Okay, I might have to call an audible here.
I might have one of my performance quizzes be that. Um, in the past, what we would do, sorry, I have, to, I have to make an adjustment. Thanks for catching that, that was my bad. In the past, last year I'm talking about, we had an activity where students would use the theory that they learned to compose an arrangement for a song that they like, like a pop song. And then for the piano performance quiz, they would actually play that pop song or classical song or whatever, right? This year, because there's not, see, what's unfortunate is we would have piano lab sections where literally you could, you could go to the piano lab and play piano and um, practice these exercises. And I would have my office hours in the piano lab and we would discuss these particular uh, problems that you're having. This is a different format this year, obviously. So what instead I might do is just have you make an arrangement and then maybe sing the melody or something like that, or maybe even make it some, some include some sort of extra credit, I'm not sure, um, component to it. But in retrospect, that was a really cool activity. I think a lot of students really like that. So um, it's less dry than the homework, more practical. So I'll think about that and reassimilate that to the syllabus. But thanks for bringing that out. I, I, it was off my radar for a second. So thank you. I'll refactor that. That 7.77% might cease to be a repeating decimal once I make these adjustments. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Uh, hi. I want to ask about the homework for use the canvas. So I think we are good at use. I'm good at use the canvas. So can you, will you um, post the homework or something in the canvas? Oh. Okay. So the homework. Yeah. The assignment will be on Canvas. The, like where you submit it will be on Canvas, but the homework itself will be on this Google no, Drive. Okay. Yeah. And so okay. I actually have to make I have to make the uh, the Canvas assignment submission, and then you basically um, you'll submit it. I can even yeah, and then then you just submit the homework uh, there. One, once once I do that, it'll be clear. I'll also remove some extraneous tabs from Canvas and things like that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, may I ask a question? Like, uh, I just wonder when we'll know our uh, like sections, like who our our um, TAs are assigned. Like, oh group? yeah, absolutely. That's actually on the syllabus. So um, let me oh. share my screen. It's um, it's it's current. So it's um, there was a swap where where one of your TAs, but but that's reflected in the syllabus. So actually, uh, these if you'd like to email them. This is, uh, these are their emails, um, depending on which, you probably know, you, I'm guessing you know your section time already, so. I see, okay. And they should be in contact with you as well, um, but yeah, good question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Um, sorry, I missed like the first half of the third, the first of this class. Um, is this an asynchronous class or is it synchronous? It's a synchronous class, but there's a caveat. It's, it's, I have all the lectures available. Like I'll put all the lectures on a YouTube playlist for you to watch after class. Mm -hmm. But I, my guess like the require the, the expectation I have, because it's, there's, I gain, I just feed off the energy of the students. And mm -hmm. I think there's something about, I can, I can like the, the comments you make in class are very helpful for me to construct the course curriculum. So I guess if you can make it to class, it's a requirement. But if you have a time zone difference, you have to let me know and really, sorry, you have to let the TAs know and CC me on the email and then we'll make an exception and you could watch the lectures asynchronously. You could always watch, rewatch the lecture on the YouTube playlist if you do come to lecture because it's going to be on the YouTube playlist. Um, but I, just for, just to kind of keep track of everyone and make sure people aren't falling off track, I think it's a good um, thing for people to come. But I know circumstances prevent some people from being here synchronously. Okay. Um, I guess I'm wondering, like, just to make sure that, like, will you be, like, keeping attendance? Well, I guess I'll be keeping track of who let, let us know ahead of time. Zoom keeps track of every attendance. Like, we have attendance uh -huh. reports for, for every single login. So, like, I, I'll know, like, all the UCSD students when they came to the lecture, when they left lecture. It's more so, like, there's not an explicit portion of your grade that is cataloging that but there's just like an accountability um, aspect. Um, and like, so yeah, it's, I can't like, I yeah, like I, I can't like literally the school won't let me keep, let me grade you on attendance, but I have to try my best 
to make sure you guys come to class. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, happy to have you in the class. Did you get my message, by the way? Oh, I've been I've been a little bad at responding. Like, what did you just send? What was your email? Um, I no, I just sent a message because I came late because I switched two of my classes, and my other class that started at eleven happened to have a nine thirty time as well. So I sat in the class, realizing that I should have been here. Oh, just, okay. I just yeah. wanted to let you know. <laughs> no worries. It was it, honestly it was really boring for the first thirty minutes. Anyway, it was just syllabus talk. So probably for the best. Yeah, no worries. You sent it on the chat. Sometimes it's hard for me to, because it's such a large class, it's hard for me to check. I should ask the TAs. Well, they're probably not going to be here, but I'll, I'll take a look at the chat periodically just to make sure I'm not missing anything. But you could speak up too. But I guess for that, it's good that you sent it in the chat because it's, it's, it's not important. But yeah, no, no worries at all. All right, I see a few others here. I'm not sure if they're just sticking around or... Um, Emily? Uh, I don't have a question, so I'm just trying to add someone to a group chat. Okay, yeah, no worries. For cool. this class, yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, you're creating a group chat for the class. Yes. Nice. Awesome, yeah. Let, every, let everyone know. Yeah, um, there's like few people here, but in the next lecture, I will um, make sure to do that. Sure, absolutely. I actually have a, a, my own personal like student like, teaching Discord server, too, so I'll like put a link to that and create a, a thread or something, so. Cool. Ashley, are you still here? <laughs>